Doing it again. Doing it again. Cool. Fixing my belt. <laughs> Hello, future me. That's not this channel. That's someone else's channel. Hi, in the next bits of time, I. <laughs> now, this concept isn't new. It's actually kind of talked a lot. So, so this concept isn't exactly new. Sun Tzu, the... Hey, self. So I want to be reminding you about this idea that you thought was really cool. This is on the concept of optimizing happiness. So the idea here is that if you like something, then you'll probably want to get really good at it because you enjoy it. And if you get really good at it, well, then someone else would like you to do it for them. So this is around the concept of intrinsic motivation, which is the feeling that you want to do something because you want to. Like, if you want to draw something, you draw because it's fun to draw. If you want to play a video game, it's fun to play because it's just you enjoy playing that video game. There's extrinsic motivation, which is the idea that someone pays you or gives you something to do it. You draw because it's your job to draw advertisements, for example. Maybe you love it and it's intrinsically motivated. Maybe you're planetarily motivated. It doesn't really matter. Then there's even like esports, right? Maybe you're extrinsically motivated to play Call of Duty rather than League of Legends because you get paid money as an esport master even though you like both games a lot. So there's a bunch of assumptions that you have to kind of take to believe that optimizing happiness is something you can really do. You have to trust in yourself. You have to trust that it is likely that once you like something a lot, you will like it a lot in a way that you can make it valuable for someone else. And this comes with a lot of practical risk as well. I mean, it takes time to get good at something. 10,000 hours is the expected time to become an expert at something. And then on top of that, you have to like, pay, you have to eat, you have to live before you can optimize happiness to this degree. The thought process is that you're making this choice daily. It's a patience thing. It's something you do over time. So this concept isn't very new. Uh, Sun Tzu, the general, was like, hey, if you know thyself and know thy enemy, you will not fear defeat in a hundred battles. It is as important to Sun Tzu to know yourself as it is to know your enemy, to know the troop movements, the numbers, the skill. It is as important to know those things as it is to know yourself. And this is something really important to note because of the three steps I'm gonna die. God, the three steps I'm gonna die. There's three steps I'm gonna diagram for myself. So step one is know what you like to do. Step two is know how to package that in a way that other people would like. Now, a great way to figure that out is to look at your competition. Ah, know thy enemy. Step three, how to package it in a way where people will be willing to pay for it. Not just absorb it, but want to buy it. That is know thy enemy again. Step one, step two, step three are all as important as the other ones. However, they need to go in order. If you go to step two and start thinking about packaging things before you know you can actually do step one, well, then you're not gonna succeed because you'll either not love the thing that you do or eventually burn out. You want to go to step one, step two, then step three. Step three, if you jump to that one straight away, well, how do you package something in a way that people will enjoy? Because if you can't at least get people to enjoy it, why would they want to buy it? Now, there's a lot of research showing that if you like what you do, being productive follows suit. For example, doctors were more effective at diagnosing patients if they were happy and they felt good. Salespeople were more effective at selling and getting better happy clients if they themselves were happy. But note here that I mentioned that if they were happy, not if they were good. The thing is, if you had skill levels at the exact same level, the happy person is gonna do better than the sadder person or the neutral person. It improves you on a pure no skill level or skill level, depending on how you wanna see that. But the point here is that it's not just gonna make you better because you like to practice. That is just as important. You have to be good at the thing to have happiness really actually help. But the thing is, is, being happy and enjoying something means that you're gonna like it better so that you will practice it more, so you build that skill set. Then on top of it, being happy improves you. It's cool. Put it in links down below, including the TED Talk from the Happiness Advantage. It was a good one. All right, so how do you figure out step one? This is something that I struggled with, as you remember, but the concept is to figure out by trying things. See if you like it. Think about what you like. Notice what you notice. What makes you laugh? What makes you kind of like get frustrated? Because if something gets you frustrated, you probably have an idea of how to do it better. If you notice something that you notice and just talk about it, that's interesting because you will probably be the one person noticing that thing. Now I tried a lot of those things and it definitely helped. But the trick for me was that I kept thinking about YouTube videos. Like I wanted to have a YouTube video game channel and I kept being like, oh, I love playing video games. 
but Let's Plays aren't very effective in YouTube. And so I was in this moment of like, well, how I wanna, but, uh, and so I kept thinking about number two, not number one. And eventually I changed the question to, what YouTube channel would I be willing to contribute to even if it didn't make me any money or nobody watched it? Then I started coming up with this idea where I teach myself something because I like talking about things. I like learning about things and I like teaching things. And I like to know why I think things and have evidence behind them. I also discovered that I just really wanna share wisdom. I'm drumming on the chair. <laughs> so there's another part of this that's really important and it's important for me to remember this as well, which is that if doing the thing that you love isn't what you want to do as a job, that's okay. A lot of the times when people encourage you to chase your dreams, shoot for the moon and then you'll land among the stars, they kind of shame the people who don't want to shoot at the moon. It's not bad if you're not interested in having your dream job. If you're doing something that makes you happy so that you can then do the thing that makes you the most happy or something that's even just acceptable, that's good. It's about optimizing happiness. If your optimum happy level comes from doing something that's acceptable, to then do something that you love, whether it's you just really like drawing and you don't wanna be paid for it, then don't worry about being paid for it. Focus on the thing that lets you do the thing that you love, that's okay. Do the thing in the best way that makes you happy, not in the way that other people tell you how to do it. That's what optimizing happiness is about.